Welcome to the channel, welcome to my review of Adeptus Custodes. This is up for pre-order today. You can buy it from Games Workshop from the 27th of January. I want to thank Games Workshop for sending it through to me so I can review it and uh, get all this information out to the community as soon as possible. Okay, let's dive into this. Oh, mama. The volume has officially gone up to 11. Um, the Legio Custodes are here, the bodyguards of the Emperor. Uh, I think that Games Workshop are going to sell these by the boatload because when it comes to the hero archetype myth um, you don't get any more heroic than these guys. Um, so let's start off with something I never start off with, the narrative, because uh, the Games Workshop knocked the narrative out of the park. It talks um, that the, the history of the Legio Custodes is here all the way from before the time of the Horus Heresy to where they are now. Um, and it's uh, it's eye-wateringly good. <laughs> Most of the narrative so far that has been in the codexes have been a copy and paste of stuff that's come before, but this stuff is good. Uh, a lot of people are probably wondering what happened to Constantine Valdor. He was the leader of the Custodes during the time of the Horus Heresy, and I can say he's MIA. He's missing in action. Um, he may still be out there and he may still return and anyone who's seen his stats from the Horus Heresy books knows that Baldor can probably take on a Primarch, he's that beef. Um, I like the fact that they uh, said he's missing and a number of other leaders from the uh, Legio uh, Custodes are also missing out there. They're leaving it open, that thread open for perhaps Black Library authors to um, either write in his return or write in his death at the end of the Horus Heresy when they get back to it. And the narrative does nail the feel for the custodies, whereas Space Marines, for example, fight as a cohesive unit. These guys are singular warriors armed with the best weaponry that the Imperium um, can devise. But not only must they grasp the tenets of warfare and all its forms and threads, they also expand their minds in far more esoteric directions directions such as diplomacy, statecraft, interstellar geography, history, philosophy, artistry. All of these uh, countless sub uh, subjects must be mastered to a breathtaking degree. These guys are geniuses and it says no truth is withheld from the Adeptus Custodes, uh, Custodes for all. in order to do their duty without impediment they must possess all the facts about the dark terrors that seek to conquer the galaxy. These guys have the answers to the questions that we are asking and have been standing guard by the Emperor's throne for 10,000 years. And there's 10,000 of them. They are the 10,000. As such, they know how far the Imperium has fallen. And then um, there's a nice chapter on, a nice chapter, a nice page on when Gulliman uh, turns up and uh, makes a pact with these guys. Essentially, because of the massive corn invasion that happened around the time of this coming of the Great Rift, corn demons rampaging through the Imperial Palace itself, that's when they decided to change their role rather than stand guard for just 10,000 years to take a bit of more proactive role because this is surely the end times. They now need to get out there and snuff out the most direst threats before they become a, um, a direct threat to the Imperial Palace itself. As such, the 10,000 are deployed in shield companies and you don't have to paint them all gold. <laughs> There's black ones and white ones as well. The black ones are called the Shadow Keepers and the white ones are called the Solar Watch. Each shield company is led by a shield captain and um, in the history, in the timeline, it talks about different shield companies going off to smash an orc threat or smash a xenos threat, as well as, of course, taking on their favourite bad guys, the Chaos and the Black Legion dudes. So if you were to organise your army along narrative lines, you would have one shield captain and then the, the, the guys that come along with them, the foot soldiers on the ground, dreadnoughts, terminators and bikers. Um, but to fill out a battalion detachment, you need two shield captains. <laughs> And that to get you through three command points. It does say in the narrative that shield captains are often accompanied by another shield captain who act as consuls or companions or friends. So uh, two friends go out together. They take a shield company with them and smash the uh, enemies of man. Quick addendum, just trying to squeeze this in here. There's no Forge World units in this review. Um, if you want to really fluff out, if you want to really add to your uh, custodies uh, army then check out forge world website and there's more vehicles more custodies goodness there that you can get but they're not in this book 
Right, let's dive into it. Before I talk about the rules and the stratagems and each individual unit, so I want to talk about the army itself because these guys are hella expensive. Hella expensive? That's a word now. Um, just a single custodian guard armed with a guardian spear. The cheapest that you can get is 52 points. And a shield captain armed with a guardian spear is 122 points. So a single battalion detachment, that is three units of three custodian guards because they can come in units of three that's the minimum size and two shield captains is 712 points that's your cheapest battalion option so at 712 points you can work out if you want to get double battalions on it in it you can get a double battalion for less than 2000 points but you can't get a triple battalion um the cheapest loadout that you can get, um, the cheapest type of force that you can get will, for a double battalion at 2,000 points, will give you 18 foot soldiers, 4 HQs, and leave you some points left over. And that will give you between 5 or 6 bikes, uh, the Virtus Praetors. Um, so you're probably, if you want to do it at 2,000 points, you're going to probably do 2 shield captains on foot, 2 shield captains on bikes, that will give you 18 custodian guards on foot and five more bikes. That's just south of 2,000 points. So you're looking at 27 to 28 models, uh, 18 foot soldiers, five or six bikes um, for south of 2,000 points to get a double battalion. What does that mean? That means that seeing independent, separate uh, uh, Legio Custodes armies on their own just a legio custodies army on their own is going to be pretty rare unless you really 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 want to play them on their own unless you just uh like them so much and i i think they're going to sell like hotcakes um i'm certainly going to get a few of these guys but i think they're going to be best suited as an allied detachment you're probably going to bring along some guard you're probably going to bring along some space marines some mechanicum something like that and have a squad of these guys um, you're probably going to see them more often than not deployed on the battlefield as an allied force in an armies of an, the Imperium uh, army. That's what you're going to see in an armies of the Imperium list. But as I said, if you want to bring them on their own to get a double battalion, it's going to be between 27 and 8, 28 models. If you're going to get a single battalion to get six command points, then you're probably going to have less models than that because you're probably going to spend less points on individual custodian guards and more points on the terminator variants that come in this book so a 2000 point army single battalion is probably going to have only between 20 to 21 or 22 models that's it however that would be cheap to buy <laughs> you could get that army quite quickly and get it painted up quite quickly and get it on the battlefield quite quickly um it's officially probably the cheapest army that games workshop now sell because they are so tough so what do they do well what are the the basic stat lines for those that don't know if they have a weapon skill and ballistic skill of two up so these guys always hit on a two whether they're shooting or whether they're assaulting they're hitting on a two and in the book, you've got two vehicles, essentially. You've got the Dreadnoughts and the Land Raiders. These were in the index. This is a venerable Dreadnought and a venerable Land Raider. Those are your, the, the options. It's interesting that um, the Custodes can get inside the venerable Land Raider, yet Primaris Marines can't. Um, <laughs> so these guys, even though they're bigger than Primaris Marines, can fit inside Land Raiders. But uh, the Primaris dudes can't. So you've got those two vehicles. And then... In the unit selection, you have two flavors of custodies. You have the guys on foot and the guys on the bikes. The guys on the bikes are the Virtus Praetors and the guys on foot come in a number of different flavors. Now, all the guys on foot, um, as well as hitting on twos all the time, they're strength five, toughness five with a two up save. So they're very resilient. And uh, the standard troops come with three wounds. Um, if you get the Terminators that are on foot, they come with four wings at strength five, toughness five with a two up save. So the standard guys on foot, strength five, toughness five with a two up save, three wounds. Um, if you're shooting 30 bolters at them, um, normal bolters, hitting on threes, AP dash, 30 bolters will take one wound off of these guys. 90 bolter shots will kill one guy. That's how resilient they are doing the math hammer. In fact, it's just 
it's over 90 bolt shots, something like 93, 94. So they're tough as nails, and as it takes 90 bolter shots to kill one of these guys, um, just a custodian guard with a spear is 52 points. Uh, I don't know how fun it will be to play against them <laughs> because you're going to be all your small arms fire is going to be nigh on useless. You're going to need uh, weaponry with an AP1 or AP2 modifier or better. You're going to be firing heavy guns at these guys uh, to try and slow them down uh, because everything else will just bounce off them. The other way, of course, their big Achilles heel, the other way to slow them down would be to tarp at them, would be to throw in a, a, a big squad of 30 boys or 30 gaunts if you're playing Tyranids, would be, or just to send in the next wave if you're playing Trade to Guard and send in another wave and another wave and another wave and try and bog them down. And then you've got this... Unit, remember a unit of just three of custodian guards with spears is 156 points. Um, if you want to get a unit of 10 of these guys, that's 520 points. So a way to, to, to tar pit them will be a thing if you're playing against them. Um, so those are the guys on foot. They're all strength five, toughness five with a two up save and three wounds. And of course, some are four or four, uh, the terminators are four wounds. And the HQs in here have seven wounds. So, uh, well, the standard shield captains have six wounds but um, you can get them in Terminator armor for seven wounds. The Captain General, Trajan Valoris, who's a 250 point beast, he's got seven wounds. Or you can get the Terminator variants, the Vertus, um, they've got four wounds. Or you can get them on the bikes. The Vertus Praetors on the bikes come with Hurricane Bolters, and it's strength, strength five, toughness five, it's strength five, toughness six with four wounds, so they get an increased toughness and increased wounds. They've still got a two up save. And the bikes go zipping around the battlefield with a movement of 14, with hurricane bolters on them, just standard hurricane bolters. They come with their interceptor lance. These are 90 points for one model. So 90 points, four wounds, toughness six, two up save. You can put a salvo launcher on these guys. Um, that's the weapon loadout, the choices that you have. They either come with a hurricane bolter and the lance, or salvo launcher and a lance. And one Virtus Praetor on the jet bike with the uh, salvo launcher is 105 points. And um, the salvo launcher is a heavy gun, so they'll be hitting on threes instead of hitting on twos as, as, as soon as they move. And there's a single shot um, strength eight, AP minus four, D6 damage, and you can reroll fail wounds versus vehicles. Or you've got a flak burst missile which will be plus one to hit flyers. So even though it's a heavy, it will hit flyers on a two up, but it will hit all ground targets on a four up because it's minus to hit ground targets. And that's heavy D3, strength seven minus one AP, three D3 damage. So uh, a single shot missile or a triple shot missile up to triple shot missile against flyers. Those are the guns, the salvo launcher that you can put on the bikes. Uh, it's interesting. I would rather that the missile launcher had multiple strength six shots and didn't have any of this negative modifier to moving around, maybe an assault gun rather than a heavy gun. But it gives them some much needed anti-tank, anti-armor ability. Uh, remember the strength eight AP minus four single melter missile. Is, it does re-roll fail wound rolls versus vehicles. It does do D6 damage, but it is only 24 inch range. And the flak burst missile that flies up at flyers is only minus one AP at strength seven, but it's uh, D3 damage a pop. Um, and it's only 24 inch range as well. So these bikers are short range. The hurricane bolters, 24 inch range as well. So 24 inch range on the bikes, but they're quick, they've got a movement value of 18, and they're tough, they're toughness 6, and they've got 4 wounds, and they've got a 2 up save. So 52 points for the custodian guard, 90 points for the bikers with the hurricane bolters, or 105 with the salvo launcher. Custodian guard are not the only strength 5, toughness 5, through 3 wound foot slogging ones. You've also got custodian wardens, which are elites, strength 5, toughness 5, 3 wounds. These guys are 61 points a pop. They come with axes, you can swap them out for the spears instead. Um, yeah, 
Custodian Spears. These guys, Guardian Spears. Strength 4, Rapid Fire 1, AP minus 1, 2 damage. Nice for killing those Primaris Marines. All 2 damage here. But the Wardens have 4 attacks. Custodian Guards have 3 attacks. The guys on the bikes zipping around all over the place. The Virtus Bratos, they have 4 attacks. So most units in here have a base 3 attacks. Um, the, the little troops. Um, anything that's not a little troop basically has four attacks and up. So they're not too shabby in close combat. Remember, they are hitting on twos, and they are minimum strength five. So hitting on twos, winning on threes. And a standard Guardian Spear is minus three AP, D3 damage a time in melee. So they're not too shabby in close combat. You can give them axes, you can give them different loadouts, the, the Wardens. You can give the guys shields as well, Storm Shields, uh, the guys on foot, which will give them a 3-up invulnerable save. You're not going to need it, I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, and the Interceptor Lance on the Virtus Praetors is the same as a Guardian Spear, essentially, in close combat. It's plus 1 strength, minus 3 AP, D3 damage. So it does the same sort of damage as a guardian spear a guy on foot however you can re-roll failed wound rolls for this weapon on the turn in which a bearer made a successful charge so exactly the same stats as a guardian spear but re-rolling a wound when you charge uh, and remember Virtus Praetors the guys on the Dawn Eagle jet bikes have four attacks whereas normal custodian guards only have three but then you've got Wardens, four attacks, and Vexillus Praetors, and da da da. And the Terminators, they are Alaris Custodians. Again, four wounds. They have four attacks as well. Um, they come with different weapons, though. Each model is armed with a Castellan Axe and a Ballistus Grenade Launcher. And where's my notes? Here we are, 84 points each. So the Terminator variants are 84 a pop. Um, four attacks, toughens five. Four wounds, nice. The axe, rapid fire one, same as the uh, guardian spear. It's rapid fire one, strength four, minus one AP, two damage. And in close combat, instead of plus one, it's uh, plus three strength, which gets you up to strength eight, <laughs> minus uh, two AP, D3 damage. So the spears have got a better AP, minus three AP instead of minus two, but these guys are strength eight with D3 attacks. And they also come with these um, grenade launchers, which are quite interesting. They're only 12 inch range and they're Assault D3. Assault D3 is good, so you can run forward. And uh, D3 shots, they're strength 4, not very strong, but they are minus 3 AP and 1 damage each. And despite being Terminators, the Alaris Custodians still move 6. Everything on foot here moves 6. They aren't slow, these big boys. Like normal Terminators, they can move around and pump out shots. So 52 points for a normal custodian guard on foot or 84 points for the terminator variant and you'll get an extra wound, an extra attack, a shorter range shooty gun, but you can replace the um, Castellan Axe with Guardian Spears if you want to. Um, you will lose that magic strength 8 attack in close combat. It will make them 2 points cheaper from 84 points down to 82 points. Um, Losing that strength 8 though, it does give you a bit more shooter. You will have the um, grenade launcher at 12 inch range assault D3, but you'll also have the rapid fire shots on the Guardian Spear as well, so these guys will be shooting twice. I wanted to give you some idea of the standard troops that are in the book, the standard points costs for the units inside the book. So we can now see that uh, all the units here come in at minimum squads of three. A unit of three custodian guards, the cheapest unit is 156 points. A unit of three Terminators is over 240 points. A unit of three bikes is 270 points. Um, they are pricey for three models at a time, but they're all tough as nails. They all have multiple wounds. They all have that nice two up save. They all have a rule called Aegis of the Emperor, which gives them a five up invulnerable save. But to give you some idea of just how pricey these guys are, let's look at this picture here. Right, this is the Fury of Terror shield host as laid out just before you dive into the unit selection and you see pictures like this in all of the codexes. It looks like a pretty standard typical army that you might want to bring along, right? Well, um, being the intrepid reporter that I am, I looked thoroughly at this picture and added up all the points costs and what you're looking at is 3,248 points this 
this picture in front of you here. That's how much that costs. If you take out the two dreadnoughts and the land raider, you're still looking at 2,456 points. So minus the vehicles, it's still not even below 2,000 points. Pricey stuff. So how would you play an army that looks like this in practice? Well, they're, because they're so pricey, you don't want to leave a unit of three at the back sat on an objective, scoring it turn after turn. Maelstrom of War games are going to be a bit tough for you if you just bring a, an army of uh, Legio Custodes. How are you going to play an army like this is you're going to deploy as aggressively as you can, use some of their teleport teleportation stratagems, and you're want, going to want to throw yourself at the enemy and try and smash them utterly. You're going to have to be big, you're going to have to be bold, you can take the punch back, you're tough. You're going to throw yourself at the enemy and try and cut them into pieces as quickly as you can and then pull back onto the objectives and score later in the game. Or if it is a Maelstrom of War where you're drawing cards every turn, you want to smash the enemy as hard as you can to prevent them from scoring. Because you don't have very many scoring options here, because you don't have any many units, you can't score very much. You're going to want to try and smash them as quickly as you can to cut down the number of units that they can score with. You're going to have to pay, play hyper aggressively with this army. So that's what the army looks like on, in practice. It's a low model count army, high resilience, high toughness um, army. So let's dive through some of the special rules and some of the stratagems and some of the toys that they have to see how they go about killing, to see how they go about taking, uh, delivering the emperor's justice to the enemy. So we started off with the Army of Terror has the Aegis of the Emperor and all models in it have a 5 up invulnerable save and in addition each time you lose a mortal wound in the psychic phase on a 6 that mortal wound is not ignored. So a chance, 1 in 6 chance of uh, ignoring mortal wounds there. And then we flip past the unit, uh, all the unit choices to the Auric Mortalis and in the back there's two more abilities that you get if you bring a battle-forged army. So if all infantry and biker units in an Adeptus Custodes detachment gain the Sworn Guardians and the Emperor's Chosen abilities. Um, this is for a battle-forged army. You could bring a detachment. Everyone in it is a Custodes. The Emperor's Chosen is the unit's invulnerable save is improved by one. So with the Aegis of the Emperor, everyone's got a five up. You bring a battle forge detachment everyone's got a four up and vulnerable save which is why i don't think you need to spend this points on storm shields previously bringing a couple of uh, units along with storm shields on them um, would be a good idea a three up and vulnerable save but now they have a four up and vulnerable save as standard as long as you bring a battle forge attachment storm shields cost 10 points what you could do is bring a unit of three or a unit of four or five, probably not going to go higher than five. They do come into you up to units of ten, though, most of the units in this book. So you can bring a unit of ten bikes or ten Terminators. Now, you can't put a Storm Shield on the bike or the Terminators, the Alaris Custodians, but you can put Storm Shields on the Custodian Guard or the Custodian Wardens. Remember, the Guard are the ones with... Uh, um, Three attacks and the Wardens are the ones with four attacks. That's essentially their main difference. And any model may take a Storm Shield if you want to. A Sentinel Blade and a Storm Shield. It's 12 points for a Guardian Spear and 19 points for a Sentinel Blade and a Storm Shield. So for seven more points, what you could do is sprinkle in the odd Storm Shield here and there to give one model their three up and vulnerable save to tank the odd wounds. You could do that. Seven points. For a three up and bun instead of a four up and bun but because these units are so pricey anyway um i don't know if if you really want to drop a, a storm shield in there i guess you might you might not it's up to you and then the other thing they have is swarm guardians basically a unit with this ability that is a within range of an objective marker and this applies to any infantry and biker units controls that marker even if there are more enemy models within range. Now this is the ob old objective secured rule that you have in all the codexes. In all the other codexes it has to be a troop's choice. So if you have a troop on an objective and there's two guys there and they're fighting 10 uh, elites from another army then and they've survived at the end of the turn then those troops will secure that objective because the troops outnumber the elites and they have objective secured they score the unit here it doesn't matter whether you're an elite 
it doesn't matter whether what unit type you are you just have to be a biker or infantry so essentially you could be one hq guy you could be uh, a shield captain stood on an objective going toe to toe with an imperial knight yes they can probably take it and you will score it even though you're not a troop you're a hq because sworn guardian means all infantry bikers units and adeptus custodius armies get objective secured will secure that objective marker so those are the buffs let's have a look at the units captain general trajan valoris he is the captain general of the custodies he's 250 points strength 5 toughness 5 7 wounds leadership 10 and he has a 3 up invulnerable save and you can re-roll hit rolls and wound rolls of 1 made for friendly adeptus custodies within 6 inches of him you're hitting on 2s anyway so hitting on 2s re-rolling 1s but you're re-rolling wound rolls of 1 uh, with this guy around. Um, his watches acts as a strength 5 uh, version at 2 damage and um, in melee it's times 2 strength. It does the same thing um, in melee as the other watches axes which is times 2 strength minus 3 AP D3 damage a pop. Now this guy has a special relic called the moment shackle and it's the only way to get command points back. Um, in an army where you really want command points, there are no warlord traits here that give you command points. There are no goodness in the back of the book that says every time you spend a command point, roll a dice and on a five up you get a command point back. I looked and looked again and I can't find anything like that in there. I may have made a mistake, but I was scouring it to see if that was a possibility. Um, there's no relics that allow people to get um, command points back. So this is the guy that gets you your command points back. And the Moment Shackle has three abilities which you can do once per battle, and one of them you can regain up to D3 command points spent when you use a stratagem, but no more of that was spent on the stratagem. So if you spend a stratagem that's three command points, you can roll a D3 and get up to three back. If you spend a stratagem that's worth one command point, you're only going to get one back. The Moment Shackle, or you can use the Moment Shackle, to do two of another things one is to regain d3 wounds on the dude and another one is to pile in an attack again at the end of a, a fight phase one more time so essentially you can attack twice he's got five attacks the other standard hq in here is the shield captain and um Captain General Trajan Valorus allows you to re-roll hits and wounds of one a shield captain allows you to re-roll hits of one but no wounds However, a standard stripped down shield captain with a guardian spear is quite cheap, is 122 points. You can chuck him on a, a jet bike as well, a Dawn Eagle jet bike with hurricane bolters, and he's 160 points. Um, I say quite cheap, he's got six wounds at toughness five. If you put him on a Dawn Eagle jet bike, he'll have seven wounds at toughness six. So 160 points for a toughness six seven wound guy that allows you to re-roll hit rolls of one and that's in the uh, it just says re-roll hit rolls of one that'll be shooting and assault um is it's probably it's good value for your money had to pause there and go back and check the point section make sure i got that right yeah 160 points on a door eagle jet bike that's not bad uh, for uh, six wounds uh, seven wounds and toughness six anyway the standard shield captain six wounds um, as well as re-rolling ones you can take him in different flavors so you can give him the axe you can give him the guardian spear remember these shooting the axes and the spears are only strength four minus one ap two damage each they're only strength four so um, these guys really excel when they get in close combat that's when you're using your axes at strength eight to take apart vehicles or um, if you want to take down vehicles using uh, the custodes you're going to need you're going to need some bang you're going to need that land raider you're going to need something you're going to need some jet bikes you're going to need something to take on vehicles because again one of their achilles heel will be taking out vehicles unless they run up and punch them so you've got the shield captain on foot you've got the shield captain on a dawn eagle jet bike and you've got a shield captain in alaris terminator armor um, the guy on the bike, toughness six, seven wounds. The guy on the Terminator armor, toughness five, seven wounds. And they all have the inspirational fighter rule, which is reroll hit rolls of one. Um, the shield captain in Terminator armor has the rule from golden light. From golden light they come. Uh, basically, he can teleport into uh, battle. 
and um, so you can set them up in the teleportarium and they can drop in nine inches away from an enemy unit and the shield captain on a dawn eagle jet bike has implacable vanguard and when this model advances adds six to its move characteristics instead of rolling a dice pretty standard for bikes so when he's advancing he's going 20 zipping around the battlefield. Um, the shield captain on the bike, it comes with the hurricane bolter. Again, you can upgrade it to have the salvo missile launcher if you want to. Salvo missile launcher is, I think it's 15 points above the hurricane bolters um, for that heavy one shot or that heavy D3 shot versus flyers. So you can bring in uh, different flavors and in the box set for the, the bikes, there is a conversion that allows you to make a shield captain on a Dawn Eagle jet bike. I think the conversion piece is basically swap off the head. So instead of have a head with a plume, you give the guy no helmet because he's a captain and captains don't wear helmets. So you can hear, hear him when he's shouting at you. Um, basically what I want to say is you can make your captain on a bike using the normal box sets of that Games Workshop supply for the, uh, the biker dudes. And those are your HQs. That's it. You've got the name character, Trajan Valaris, and shield captains in Terminator Armour's bikes or on foot. Uh, then you've got troops, and there's one troops choice, which is custodian guard. So if you bring a battalion attachment, you bring in custodian guard. That's it. The custodian guards, as, as mentioned, you can give them sentinel blades and shields, or you can leave them with the guardian, guardian spear. The sentinel blades and guardian spear shooting are all strength four. Gu um, Again, you're going to want to run up and punch people in close combat. All of these guys, by the way, there's a new thing in here called Misericordia. Four points. It's four points. And you can get an extra attack. If you, if you, if you want to spend four points per model, each time the bearer fights, it can make an additional attack with this weapon. And it's a strength user, minus two AP, one damage. So if you want to get your uh, attacks up by one uh, with a minus two strength user, damage one hit, you can. It's four points a pop. Um, because these guys are so expensive, don't know if many people would do that. Anyway, that's the troops, the custodian guards. They comes with shields, they comes with their spears. Their shooting is lackluster because it's strength four, um, but their close combat is where it really, and their resilience is really where it shines. And then in the elite section, there's only five elites in here. There's the dreadnought, as mentioned, and then there's wardens, uh, which are basically the same as the custodian guard but they've got an extra attack and you can give them um, uh, um, the loadout they've got extra attack extra leadership and you can give them the axes and because you can give them the axes their attacks their strength can get up to strength eight you can't give these guys shields though so the custodian guard the normal troops can come with shields the custodian wardens the elite you can't chuck shields in there, but you can get axes on these guys, the Castellan axe, which um, gets you up to strength eight in close combat. The normal guys on foot, the custodian guard, the normal guys, the troops can't get the axes. So why would you take wardens? Well, you'd take them because, I don't know, um, to get those strength eight attacks in close combat, I suppose. Custodian guards, the troops are 52 points of pop. Custodian wardens, 61 points of pop because with the with a guardian spear and 64 if you give them the axes and charge them in so four attacks with strength eight attacks is quite nice so yeah so they're a, f a flavor of guys that you can get um then there's the dreadnought as i mentioned the two other troops choices uh, the two other elites choices are the vexillus and the vexillus are standard bearers there's a vexillus not in terminator armor and there's a vexillus in terminator armor so the Vexillus, uh, the one in Terminator armor, obviously can deep strike it into the battlefield. And what happens is these guys, you can reroll failed morale tests for friendly Imperium infantry and biker units within six inches of this model. So the Vexillus guys, this is Imperium, anything of the Imperium, um, uh, Mechanicum, uh, Guard, whatever. Space Marines will reroll morale tests. Well, they do that anyway, don't they? With, and they shall know no fear. But Guardsmen will reroll morale tests within six inches of this guy. Uh, in addition, uh, when you add this model to your army, you can choose one of the following uh, for this model to carry. So he carries, there's three different types of banner you can buy, three different types of vexilla that you can buy. And the first one, 
Uh, custodies models other than vehicles add one to their attacks characteristics while they're within six inches of this guy. So your normal troops go up to four attacks, your custodian wardens and your who are your elites, the guys with the strength eight axes, or the Alaris custodians, the terminators, go up to five attacks. Your Virtus Praetors, the guys on the jet bikes, go up to five attacks. So you can plus one to your attacks within six inches of this guy. He's a character, he's got six wounds. Um, he is in range of himself, so his attacks will go up to um, uh, five as well. So he will not be able to be targeted unless he's the closest model. So, reroll morale. That will affect Imperium infantry. These guys as well, custodians by the way, don't have and they shall know no fear. Their leadership is standard, there's nine everywhere. Um, the HQ characters, uh, the, the, the named HQ character has leadership 10, but everyone else has leadership nine. So if you lose a number of models, then morale might be a thing, but let's face it, it's gonna take a serious amount of firepower or a serious concentrated of assault, which means you're gonna lose more than three models in a turn for morale to affect you. If you lose three models in one turn from one unit and you roll a nine for your morale, that's still leadership nine, you'll still be okay. Um, the custodian guard are leadership eight, they are the lowest, just the standard troops. So if you lose more than two and you roll a six, you might be in trouble. Um, so yeah, it's going to take a serious amount of firepower for the morale phase to affect you. However, the custodes will re-roll morale within six inches of him and everyone else from the Imperium within six inches of him. And custodes models add one to all their attacks within six inches of him. Now the good one, Vexilla Defensor. Imperium infantry units. This is all Imperium infantry units. Think about that for a second have a five up invulnerable save against range weapons while they're wholly within nine inches, wholly within nine inches, or the Vexillus Praetor. So Space Marines with a five up invulnerable save, wholly within nine inches of this guy. Guardsmen with a five up invulnerable save, wholly within nine inches of this guy. Uh, Admech, it goes on, the list goes on. Um, I can see this guy being abused in many tournament lists. <laughs> five up from the vulnerable save versus shooting uh, and the vexilla magnifica uh, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls in the shooting phase for attacks that target adeptus custodies units within six inches of any friendly vexillus praetor with this vexilla so minus one to hit um, any custodies units within six inches like I said, there's two flavors of these guys. There's the one in Terminator armor, and there's the one just standing on his own. And um, you're probably, you might want to bring two of them. You might want to bring the guy that gives you extra attacks, and you might want to give the guy that gives you, you're not going to bring the guy that gives you a five up in vulnerable save if you're taking custodies on their own, because custodies on their own have a four up in vulnerable save if they're battle forged. But if you're bringing him as an ally to another army of the Imperium, then you're almost certainly bringing uh, the guy along that gives you a five up invulnerable save to Imperium infantry. Not your tanks, your infantry within nine inches, wholly within nine inches of him. So he'll be a good buffer for your allied choices and he'll be a good buffer, one of these guys, to give you an extra attack when you're smashing face, when you're jumping in, if you're bringing just a custodies unit for the uh, Vexilla Imperus. That's your Vexillas. 80 points without Terminator armor, 100 points with Terminator armor before you add the guns, before you add the spears. Right, Alaris Custodians, uh, four wounds. So these are the Terminator dudes. Um, they have the grenade launcher, which I mentioned earlier. They have a Castellan axe and or they can swap them out for guardian spears so you can get your guardian spears for um plus one strength minus three ap d3 damage or you can get your axes for plus three strength which gets you up to strength eight minus two ap d3 damage and these guys can teleport into the fight and if you have a vexillus praetor in terminator armor they don't call it in Terminator armor. Yeah, they do. In Terminator armor stood next to them. These guys will go up to five attacks uh, at strength eight. Remember that strength eight isn't unwieldy as well. They're hitting on twos at strength eight with five attacks each. You put um, 
So here's a combo for you. Teleport three of these into the battlefield with a Vexillus next to them. So these three models will have 15 attacks. There's a shield captain nearby. They're hitting on twos, re-rolling ones. And then at strength eight, they're typically wounding on twos. And their axes are minus two AP at D3 damage a pop. They're gonna murder. And then the Vexillus Praetor is probably gonna follow up behind. And then probably the um, shield captain is gonna follow up behind. Because they're the Alaris Custodians are in Terminator armor, they can teleport in. And when models in, they have a rule called Slayer of Tyrants. When the models in this unit pile in and consolidate, they can always move three inches towards the nearest character, not the nearest model. Because they really want to kill them tyrants. Um, and then, apart from the Dreadnought and the Land Raider, the only other unit left in this book is the Virtus Praetors. These are the guys on the Dawn Eagle jet bikes. I think I mentioned them all. So... Toughness 6, 4 wounds, 4 attacks. Uh, they come with spears, which the interceptor lances, which are basically guardian spears, which you can reroll wounds when you charge. So, again, combination. Let's do a combination here. These guys have 4 attacks. They go charging in. There's a Vexillus nearby. They'll have 5 attacks. A unit of 3 of these will have 15 attacks on the charge when they go flying in. They're hitting on 2s. If there's a shield captain on a bike nearby... They're hitting on twos, re-rolling ones. So those 15 attacks, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones. Their interceptor lances, plus one strength, minus three AP, D3 damage, are re-rolling to wound because they just charged. And so hitting on twos, re-rolling, wounding on threes, re-rolling. Um, yeah, they're tough. They're very nice. Long story short, that's it. Those are the units in the Adeptus Custodes book. You don't want these guys to hit you. They'll hit you like a brick. Um, you could tie them up with a massive horde, but not for very long. You're going to need to feed another one in. They're not particularly shooty, the Adeptus Custodes. The, their anti-tank weaponry is their fists. They will beat you. Or um, you're going to put multi-melters on Venerable Contemptor Dreadnoughts. Or... Las cannons on the land raider. I'm not going to go through the contempt of dreadnought or the the land raider stuff. Um, you guys know what these things do. So I hope you don't mind. But let's summarise. The cheapest 2,000 point battle forged army you can get is going to have something like 27, 28 models in it, and that's it. Because the army won't have very many units in them, you can't really hang around trying to score objectives here or there. The best way to play them, if you're only playing them as a standalone. Uh, army is to smash face as quickly as you can, and they're very good at smashing face. Um, they always hit on twos. With shield captains nearby, they'll be re-rolling them. You're probably going to want to put a Vexilla in there all the time for the additional attack. So that when these guys smash face, they smash face even harder. They excel in close combat, not shooting, but there are also ways here that you can buff infantry in armies of the Imperium as well. Notably... Uh, the Vexillus giving uh, infantry units a 5 and vulnerable save to shooting around it. So in the future, a common use for custodies that you probably see on the battlefield, I'm probably getting this wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway, is a Vexillus uh, giving um, allied infantry units a 5 and vulnerable save uh, within 9 inches, and then you're going to see a shield captain with some uh, um, terminators or with some bikers being the rock in an allied army, Allied to some space means allied to some guard, just getting thrown at the enemy as a massive distraction unit and uh, scaring the bejesus out of them while using the five of them vulnerable save somewhere in the backfield on a unit of devastators or heavy weapons crews or something like that. Um, that's my predictions and that's what it looks like. Summary over, let's dive into some of the juicy goodness. Warlord traits. General Captain, Captain General Trajan Valoris has Champion of the Imperium, and that is friendly Adeptus Custodes infantry biker dreadnought units that within 12 inches of his warlord at the start of the opponent's charge phase can make heroic interventions this phase in the same manner as a character. You can heroically intervene. Champion of the Imperium, woohoo. Peerless Warrior, each time you you make a hit roll of a six up for your warlord in the fight phase, they can make a, an additional attack. Same unit, same weapon. Three, superior creation. Each time your warlord loses a wound on a five up, they don't lose a war wound. So a five up, disgustingly resilient, but they call it superior creation here. No doubt Grandfather Nurgle thinks uh, disgustingly resilient is a superior creation as well. Uh, four, this is a nice one. Um, 
impregnable mind. Your warlord can attempt to deny the witch once in each of your opponent's psychic phases as if they were a psyker. When they do so, add one to the result of the deny the witch test. I say it's a nice one because there is no psychers in the Adeptus Custodes. The Emperor of Man didn't want um, uh, one of his custodians minds getting overtaken by a warp demon and um, turning into a warp swan in the middle, middle of the imperial palace so these guys are not psychers yes they've got that six up and vulnerable save to immortal wounds caused in the psychic phase but there's not a lot of psychic defense here this is your only psychic defense it's a deny the witch with a plus one radiant mantle your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls that target your warlord and emperor's champion you can re-roll the dice for damage inflicted by your warlord's attacks that's it for the warlord traits not uber you're probably taking impregnable mind uh, if you're going up any army with psychers because it's your only psycher defense relics there's two pages of relics you can get one for free and if you spend uh, an extra command point you can get two and if you spend three command points you can get three of these uh, the stratagem is called Open the Vaults. I like it. <laughs> so a relic for free, just as in any other army. But uh, for three command points, you can open the vaults. Uh, there is one, two, three, four, five different types of super-powered weapon that you can get. Um, I like the obliter Obliterum. So the Obliterum is... It replaces one of the Ballistus grenade launchers that the Terminators have. And it's an Assault 1 weapon. Remember, you're hitting on 2s. But it's Strength 10. Minus 4 AP, D3 damage. You need anti-armor. That's pretty good anti-armor. I won't go through the other uber weaponry, other than the fact that it's pretty uma. Let's talk about the stuff that is um, has special rules in it. Raiment of Sorrows. Roll a D6 each time a friendly custodies infantry or biker model is destroyed and on a f within 6 inches of the bearer. So a guy with a banner... Um, you roll a dice every time one of your custodies is wiped out and on a four up and that model musters one last surge of strength before succumbing to its wounds and can either shoot or attack. Um, you cannot use the even in death stratagem on a model that does so, which gives another attack on top of that. Um, so yeah, custodies are really hard to kill. You finally manage to kill one of them and then on a four up they get to fight or shoot again. Um, this is probably the auto include and it's right at the beginning of the relics of terror one because you get it for free right so you're going to be bringing it um eagle's eye improve this model's invulnerable save by one to a maximum of uh, three plus auric aquilus biker model only has a three up and vulnerable save so there's two relics there either on foot or on a bike that give you a three up and vulnerable save praetorium plate terminator model only when you set up the bearer choose a friendly imperium character at the end of your opponent's charge phase if there is an um, an enemy model within one inch of that character, you can remove the bearer from the battlefield, even if they were not on the battlefield, and set them up within three inches of that character and within one inch of an enemy model. That bearer is not considered to have charged. It's nice, it's narrative, I like it. Basically, you pick a character, right? Any Imperium character, it could be Gulliman, or it could be your tank commander or it could even be your little line imperial officer stood there shouting out orders some commissar whenever an enemy charges it gets within an inch of him you can pick up your guy with the relic and he could still be off the battlefield somewhere he could and then you can move him um, to set them up within three inches of that character and one inch of an enemy model essentially you can then Im immediately make a heroic intervention so <laughs> your enemy charges into your 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 character that has this thing and then suddenly a custodian appears right beside him piles in and smashes them i like it the praetorian plate don't think anyone is ever going to bring it but it's going to be great mind you, you could stick it on gulliman couldn't you it says any imperium character hmm and suddenly you wouldn't have gulliman to deal with you'd have gulliman and a shield captain to deal with smacking you in the face um wrath of angels models with a vax vexilla magnifica only 
Remember, the Vexillas were those elite dudes, and the Vexilla Magnifica was minus one to hit rolls in the shooting phase for your opponent for models within six inches. So, model with a Vexilla Magnifica only replaces the model's ability. It loses that minus one to hit, and instead, friendly Imperium infantry and biker units within six inches of the bearer in the morale phase automatically pass morale tests, and once per battle in your movement phase, if the bearer does not move, you can roll a D6 for each unit, friend or foe, within six inches. Subtract one for the result. If the, res uh, the unit being rolled for is a character, and two from the result, if the unit being rolled for is an Adeptus Custodes, and on a four up, the unit being rolled for suffers D3 mortal wounds. So Wrath, Angelus, once per battle, six inch range, there's a boom, a psychic boom, and a chance to do mortal wounds. And you are losing the minus one to hit rolls in the shooting phase for units uh, for attacks at target adductors custodies units within six inches of the banner to get that chance to do mortal wounds hmm let's just say hmm who's going to bring it auric shackles your opponent must subtract one from the attacks characteristics of enemy characters while they're within six inches of the bearer to a minimum of one in addition, in missions that use victory points, if the bearer slays the enemy warlord in the fight phase, you score an additional D3 points. Imagine D3 points for Kingslayer, and then an additional D3 points if the bearer of this relic kills uh, the enemy warlord. That's an extra D3 points and minus one to all characters. That's interesting. Um, Castellan's Mark. If the bearer is on the battlefield at the beginning of the game, but before the first turn, you can remove them and one friendly custodies unit within six inches of them, and then set them up again following the mission rules. So Mark of the Deceiver from the Catan there. Put your guy down on the battlefield, have a unit next to them. The enemy sets up all of this stuff, you're ready to go, and suddenly you move them from all the way from the right to the left if you want to. Faith Absolute. Models with a Vexilla Magnifica only. So this is, again, the Vexilla, which is minus one to hit. Custodies units within six inches of them. The Faith Absolute replaces that. It loses that. Instead, friendly Imperium and Biker units, Imperium infantry and Biker units within six inches of the bearer pass morale automatically, and the bearer can attempt to deny one psychic power in each enemy psychic phase as if it was a psyker. And as I mentioned, there's four beef weapons, and that's it. For your relics, you're going to be taking Raiment of Sorrows. You're going to be taking the 50-50 chance to get up and shoot or attack again if your custodian dies. Right, stratagems. And I was surprised to find that there are three pages of stratagems. Three. And some of them are very expensive. And remember, it's going to be difficult to get hold of command points to spend stratagems unless... You bring some guard and you are getting stratagems back, command points back on a five up and you're stealing stratagems, command points from your enemy on a five up and you've got two battalion detachments of guard giving you nine command points and then you bring an outrider detachment, say, of uh, custodies and you've got ten command points and then you can spend them like toffee and you can spend them all on your custodies um, stratagems because they're good. Right, let's mention some of the big ones, the three command point ones. This one was featured on the Warhammer community page and it's called Stoop and Dive and it's three command points. And at the end of your opponent's charge phase, choose an Adeptus Custodes biker unit from your army that's within 12 inches of an enemy unit. You can declare a charge with that unit as if it was your charge phase. Then you get to bite first. So your enemy has done its movement shooting and charge phase. And you've got a unit of bikes out on the wing and there's an enemy within 12 inches away for three command points. You can charge them as if it was your charge phase and you get to fight first. Um, because it says as if it was your charge phase, this is interesting. If you're locked up in close combat already and the enemy does all of its charge phases, can you then charge out of combat? I'm saying no because... You declare a charge with that unit as if it were your charge phase. But um, I can see some people perhaps arguing that they can charge out of combat with the stooping dive rule. I don't think that's the rules as intended. But for three command points, getting a free charge in in your opponent's turn. Essentially, your opponent's done his charges and then boom, you're charging in and you're going to wreck face because you're um, your custodies. Um, yeah, I like it. 
three command points. Let's have another look at some of the other big three command points ones. Right, apart from open the vaults, the only other three command point one is Vexilla Teleport Homer. Use this stratagem at the end of any of your movement phases, and when you set up a teleporting Adeptus Custodes unit at the end of the phase, you can set it up wholly within six inches of the friendly Vexillus Predator, Praetor, sorry. Um, other than one that was already set up in this turn. So you can't teleport one in and then use the Vexilla Teleport Homer to then teleport onto the Teleport Homer. He's already got to be on the battlefield. You teleport in within six inches of him and no more than three inches from enemy models, which is very interesting because normally when you teleport in, you're nine inches away, right? So for three command points, you teleport in six inches from the Vexilla and three inches away from the enemy models and then you're charging. So pretty much you are appearing and charging in that turn. It costs three command points. You've got a unit of Terminators with the Axes, so they're strength eight. They're hitting on twos, wounding on twos. They're gonna, it's, it's gonna sting. It does cost three command points though. Right, there's a lot of stratagems in here that are two command points and some that are one. Let's do the one point ones. Unflinching, fire overwatch on a five up instead of a six foot. Tangle foot grenade. Um, at the beginning of your opponent's movement or charge phase, choose an enemy unit within 12 inches um, from an Adeptus Custodes infantry unit from your army and roll a d6. Your opponent must reduce that unit's movement characteristics or charge distance by the result until the end of the phase. That one's quite nice. You're about to get charged by a unit of 30 boys. You spend a command point. You roll a dice. They're going to knock that off of their charge. They might not hit you in close combat. Avatars of the Emperor. Um, use this strategy in the beginning of the morale phase. Um, choose an Adeptus Custodes unit from your army other than a vehicle and you can use that leadership's characteristic when taking a morale test for friendly Imperium units within six inches of that unit for this phase. So typically leadership nine and it affects anyone with the Imperium. Shoulder the mantle. This one's great. Use this strategy when your warlord is slain. Choose a shield captain on the battlefield from your army and they become your warlord. One command point. Choose or generate a, a warlord trait for them immediately. For the purposes of the mission, your warlord is not considered to have been slain while this model is on the battlefield. To shoulder the mantle, one command point. You've got two shield captains. One of them is your warlord. He dies uh, for a command point. The other shield captain becomes your warlord. Uh, it is brilliant. Basically, you don't have to worry about throwing your warlord up, using his warlord traits, his five up, feel no pain, or whatever it might be. Just get him in there, do as much damage as you can, and if he dies, the other guy will become the warlord for a command point. Brilliant. Uh, network machine spirits. Um, that's uh, venerable land raiders can move and fire without penalties to shooting. Indomitable Indomitable Guardians, something Guardians. Um, use the stratagem in your opponent's fight phase after an enemy unit charged and has fought. Choose an Adeptus Custodes unit from your army that's within three inches on an on objective marker and fight with it next. So your enemy charges in, you've got some guys near an objective marker, they can fight. Inspire Fear. Uh, your opponent must add one to morale tests. Burst Missile Net. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when choosing a unit of Virtus Praetors, that's the bikers from your army, uh, when they make ranged attacks. If they all fla fire flak burst missiles at the same target with the fly, at the same target with the fly keyword, it can reroll fail to wound rolls for these attacks. That's one command point rerolling a wound against flyers. Spark of Divinity. Use this stratagem when an enemy psyker manifests a psychic power within 12 inches of an infantry or custodies biker, and you can deny the witch as if you were a psyker. Plant the Vexilla. Use this stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Choose a Vexilla Praetor. So long as he doesn't move, you can increase the range of that Vexilla ability by six inches until the next movement phase. You can't charge. So remember that nine inch in five up invulnerable save for all Imperium infantry and bikers? If this guy stands still, spends a command point and plants the Vexilla, that's a 15 inch range. So long as he doesn't charge, so long as he doesn't move. Wow. 
or a 15-inch range of re-roll and hit rolls of whatever it is for your... Uh, increasing your attacks, sorry, for your um, custodies. One command point. Piercing fight, uh, piercing strike, add one to wound rolls made for the unit's guardian spears until the end of the phase. So guardian spears, strength six, and what strength five plus one is strength six. Typically wounding on threes against infantry. They're going to be wounding on twos, hitting on twos, wounding on twos, one command point. Wisdom of the Ancients. Uh, Reroll hit rolls of one for Adeptus Custodes within six inches of a Dreadnought. Castellan Strike. Uh, select one Adeptus Custodes unit in the fight phase. Um, as long as more than one model in the unit is attacking with a Castellan Axe and they all target the same unit, improve the AP of that unit's Castellan Axe to minus three until the end of the phase because Castellan Axes are normally minus two. Remember these axes are strength eight when wielded by custodies. <laughs> so strength eight minus three, one command point. Concussion grenades, um, use a stratagem in your shooting phase when choosing a unit of Aralus custodians. These are the Terminator dudes. Until the end of the phase, their grenade launchers have an AP characteristic of zero and infantry units that are hit by these attacks are stunned until the end of the turn. They cannot fire overwatch and your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls made for the unit. So it lasts until the very end of the turn. They can't fire overwatch and it's minus one to hit. So goodbye Tau overwatch or goodbye that vengeance for Kadia or that one where suddenly they're hitting on fives, the tank, when you go charging in. Um, mind you, actually, you can't do it on tanks. It's against infantry units. So you can stun them with concussion grenades. Eyes of the Emperor. Um, when you generate a tactical objective that you don't want, chuck it away, get another one. Avenge the Fallen. Um, when you select an Adeptus Custodes unit from your army to attack in the fight phase until the end of the phase, increase the attacks characteristic of each model in the unit by one. For each model in the unit that was slain this turn. Say for some reason you did bring a unit of five guys and in this turn two of them died. Uh, you spend a command point and suddenly you increase the tax characteristics for each model in the unit by one for each model from that unit was slain. So if two of them died, your attacks go from three to five. If you're an elite or if you're a biker, your attacks go from four to six. If you've got a Vexilla nearby, you could be going to... Yeah, it's only a command point. Nice. But you've got to lose guys to, to get it off. Bringers of the Emperor's Justice. Um, when a, an Adeptus Custodes unit fight... Each time you make a hit roll of six, you're getting an extra attack with the same weapon. Basically, death to the false emperor. If you're fighting Black Legion, though, these attacks, these dice explode on a four up. So exploding dice, exploding attacks on a four up against Black Legion, six up against everything else. And all of those stratagems I just ran through are one command point. We're talking about changing your warlord mid-battle, denying the witch if you want to. We're talking about adding one to all wound rolls with guardian spears in a fight phase or getting extra attacks by avenging the fallen if a couple of your guys have died. And we're talking planting the Vexilla, increasing the range of that Vexilla model, that single guy with the banner by six inches so long as he doesn't move. That's mean. All right. Let's run through the stuff that's two command points. Unleash the Lions. The Terminator unit, the Alaris Custodians, for two command points can immediately split into separate units, each containing a single model. So you teleport down to the battlefield with a unit of three or five. You spend two command points, boom, and it splits off into a single model each. I like it. Um, and I can see it being in use. Remember, these guys are toughness five with four wounds, with four attacks, two up save, four up invulnerable save, um, with the Emperor's chosen, the improved invulnerable save. They can score objectives, um, so long as it isn't a troop's choice on an objective, with an objective secured, they can go, one of these guys can go running into a unit of devastators or running into a unit of an elite choice holding onto an objective and steal it off of them and smash them because they're very tough. Ever vigilant. Use this stratagem immediately after your opponent sets up a unit that is arriving on the battlefield as reinforcements within 12 inches and you can shoot at them as if it was the shooting phase with minus one to hit. Uh, same as the Auspex Array for Space Marines. Sentinel Storm. Uh, choose your Adeptus Custodes units that's within one inches of an enemy and you can shoot at them if you have Sentinel Blades. So that's at the end of your opponent's shooting phase. 
So you're locked up in close combat. You've got some guys with the shields and the blades. And you're hacking away, hacking away, hacking away. You don't kill everything because they're a horde or because they're orcs. And then it's your opponent's turn. Your opponent moves. Your opponent shoots. You then spend two command points. And then you can shoot your rapid fire sentinel blades into combat to try and kill some of those hordes that are bogging you down. Two command points. Inscapable Vengeance. Use this stratagem when you select a unit of Alaris Custodians. These are the Terminators. Uh, to make their attacks in the shooting phase, they can target enemy characters with their attacks, even if they're not the closest enemy model. Chance to snipe out characters, but let's review what they can have. The Alaris Custodians have a Guardian Spear or the Axe. The Guardian Spear is rapid fire 1, strength 4, AP minus 1, 2 damage at 24 inch range. Um, the Axe has exactly the same profile, strength 4. Or you can fire the grenade launcher, but it's only 12 inch range, assault D3, strength 4. But it is minus 3 AP and 1 damage each. Inscapable Vengeance targeting character seems nice, but you're not really firing las cannons or missile launchers. You're firing strength 4 weaponry at that character. Um, I guess it would be nice if there's one of those assassins just behind a line of dudes um, doing some nasty work. I, I don't know. I don't... Situational. Situational. Let's crack on. Um, two command points. Victor of the Blood Games. Use this stratagem when you set up an Adeptus Custodes character from your army during deployment. You can re-roll one hit roll, one wound roll, and one save roll for this model every single turn. Two command points. Spend it at the start. Hit. Wound and save all the time. Even in death, uh, when one of your characters is slain, a character, they can shoot as if it were the shooting phase or fight as if it were the fight phase. That's two command points. Remember, you can buy that Raiment of Sorrows uh, relic and get this for free on a four up. Uh, the Raiment of Sorrows is whenever a Custodes dude dies. It doesn't have to be a character. It's got just got to be an infantry or biker model, any infantry or biker model within six inches of the Raymond of Sorrels on a four up will shoot and fight again. Or you can spend two command points for this one if you're outside of the range, I guess, and only affect a character to shoot or fight again. That's it. Um, most of the stratagems in here, those are the two point ones. Um, most of the stratagems in here are one point. So I think we've come to the end. We've run through the stratagems and see some of the buffs in there. We've talked about the relics and seen some of the buff in there. I banged on and on and on about how expensive these guys are. And oh mama, I still like them. Some of the combinations in here are very good. That stratagem plant the vexilla and increasing his range. That's very good. Uh, the narrative, I have mentioned the narrative. I'll mention it again in here is good. Um, I can see most Imperium commanders bringing a unit or two of these guys and swooping them around the battlefield and uh, doing some damage. But to remain as a battle forged um, detachment, it's going to cost a lot of points. So an outrider detachment of bikers. If you want to bring three units of three bikers and a shield captain on a bike just with hurricane bolters, none of that salvo nonsense, that's 970 points. So that's half your army. 712 points for a battalion detachment. That's three units of three guard with two um, uh, shield captains in it. And if you want to chuck a vexilla in there for planting the vexilla, that'll get you to 830 odd points. For that, that's a battalion detachment. You could bring a patrol. You could bring just a HQ and a unit of troops and you can get away with those two um, units for around for uh, around 300 points. But you're going to be bringing a patrol because you want to bring a Vexilla along for the five up and vulnerable save or for something. So that'll get you over 400 points. It's pricey, but they're just shiny and new. The Stormcast Eternals. I like them. Um, I think I'll shut up. I've... Uh, gone on and on and on yeah i'm gonna shut up so thank you everyone for listening uh thank you for games workshop sending me this through thank you to all my patrons um i'll, I'll catch you in the uh, chat room <laughs> in my chat room and we'll discuss some of these things i would love to see a pure adeptus custodes army out there to see if it is indeed viable i think 
yeah, with 25 to 28 models on the table with, say, six, seven bikes zipping around all over the place. Um, you could do it or cutting it all the way down to 20 models and having um, the Aurelis custodians, custodians coming in, those Terminators smashing in with a Vexilla, teleporting in and then splitting off into mini units of one with bikes zipping around. You could do it. You'll probably only have six command points, <laughs> but you can do it. And how much death and destruction they could bring upon the enemies of the Imperium. It will be a glorious thing to see. Um, anyway, thank you for listening. Happy Wargaming.